video is about the kindergarten progression through reading and reading levels throughout the year. At the beginning of the year, we really focus on emergent storybooks. We really want to frame children's identity as a reader. And so we are reading these emergent storybooks to them and empowering them to feel confident in flipping through pages and retelling the story themselves. Towards November, we start looking at books with words that kids can begin to read. Um, where they move from telling just a story to reading the actual words in a text. Um, throughout the year, the text levels, we are hoping to get harder and harder. So towards January, we are gearing students towards BC books, towards March. We're still at that C or above. And then towards the end of the year, we, the hope is for children to be reading at a D and E level. So the rest of this video will explain levels A, B, C, and D in hopes of helping you better understand how to provide reading material at home for your child for independent levels and also for supported reading. So this is a level A book and this is just an example. So some of them might be a little bit different, but some features of a level A book would be kids being able to figure out the pattern, simple pattern of the book. So this one's I like apples, I like sandwiches. And in a level A book, there's usually just a couple sight words and then the harder words are words that they can figure out based on the picture. When kids are reading this level A book, adults would want to remind them to use their pointer power, so pointing at each word to use their picture power, making sure to look at the picture and check if it makes sense. Moving from left to right when reading, using those snap words, recognizing the I as a snap word and not having to sound out like, knowing like is like right away. Using their pattern power so they know that the first page says I like cookies so they know the whole book has the same pattern and they can, have, they can just read that same pattern over and over. And then for level A books, we also want to be encouraging kids to add a pinch of me where they are reading and they're also adding things that they think about in real life. So they might look at this picture and they might say, oh, that's an apple. I really like apples. So they might read it and say, I like milk. And then they might talk about if they like chocolate or vanilla milk. So they're connecting their own experiences to the book as well. This is an example of a level B book. A lot of the features are the same except for it looks just a little different because there are more words but level b books typically have a pattern as well so in this book there are boots under the bed there are shoes under the bed and then it's those kids working on figuring out the pattern and then changing their reading for it and then a lot of the things we're reminding them are the same as level a books Remember to use pointer power, use their picture power, check if it makes sense. Using those snap words and recognizing words right away. Um, and then some of them were starting to sound out CVC words. So they're looking at the picture thinking maybe it could be a toy, but maybe it could be bed. And they're sounding out but and uh, squishing it together, bed. And that is a level B book. While a level A and level B book have a lot of similarities, Level C is starting to become a little bit trickier and is a little bit different. So level C books usually have more of a seesaw pattern. So in this book, bird wants to build a nest. Is a cave the best place to build a nest? Oh no, a cave is for bears. And then they repeat the pattern, but with different things. Is a lake a best, the best place to build a nest? Oh no, a lake is for a fish. So this is kind of seesaw pattern where on each page it's kind of going back and forth with the pattern and then changing words. There's more than one pattern in this book that the kids need to figure out. When coaching kids on reading level C books, we want to make sure that they are doing the same things for level A and level B, using their pointer power, checking the pictures, moving left to right and reading, using those snap words, figuring out the patterns, talking about the book and adding a pinch of me. And then also, this is where we really start encouraging them to use sound power. Make sure that they look at the words, think about what sound it makes, fish, and then making sure the picture matches and the sounds match. We're also starting to look at all the sounds in the word, whereas level A and B, we're just looking at the first sound. 
in level C books, we are also starting to see different kinds of punctuation. And so we're talking about how, oh no, period, sounds different than, oh no, exclamation point. We're also talking about how we don't say those, they're just kind of like a secret code in the book that tells us how to read. When we get to level C books, there are also more than one sentence on most of them. So it's important to remind kids that once they get to the end of the line, then they need to go back down to the next line and go in the same direction again. At the very end of reading C books, it's also a great opportunity to start encouraging kids to talk about what they just read. So we're encouraging them to, to retell the book across their fingers. First this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then being able to retell the book, summarize it in just a couple sentences. This is a level D book example. Level D and E are kind of our end goal for the last month of kindergarten. That's where we're hoping that most of the kids will be. In a level D book, the words are starting to become longer, and rather than just a simple pattern, the book is starting to tell a meaningful story across the pages. In level D books, it's important to remind kids to use their sound power, sounding out words they don't know, huh, ah, t, hat, saying it all together, and then making sure to go back and reread the whole page so that it sounds good, it sounds like a good, easy pattern, and not choppy. So we're also encouraging kids to not sound like a robot. We want to sound like a person. We want to sound like a teacher or a parent when we're reading. Level D books are where we start also cross-checking and making sure that what we're reading makes sense. Does it sound right? And does it look right? So we're looking at the letters. Does that look right to what we said? We're looking at the picture and we're looking at if it makes sense or not in our head when we say it out loud. Some C books, I mean some D books and beyond, they also start having different things in the text. I don't think this one does, but we'll start seeing some italics, we'll start seeing some bolds, and so that's a great opportunity to start talking to kids about how the same letters might look different, and then that's another code like punctuation. It's another code that tells us how to read different words differently when reading the picture. Around level D books is where we also start talking about consonant blends and digraphs. And so we're looking at certain words and we're saying, oh, WH says w. And so we know that we don't say w, h, ear, we say w, ear, and we combine those two letters. So that's another thing that we are working on when we get to level D books. And then we're also talking a lot about inflectional endings. So we're looking at the S, the ES, the ED, and the ING on the ends of words and saying how that can change different words. Last but not least, I wanna talk about how kindergarten assesses and most of the grades assess. These are called running records and there is different assessment sheets for each level. And when we assess a kid and to see what level of reading they're at independently, we give them a book and we tell them a little bit about what the book's about. We usually read them the title and then we mark it on a sheet as they read. We mark it and then depending on how many errors they make, helps us decide what their independent reading level is. After we finish assessing a student on their reading, then we count up the miscues that they made and the depending on the number of miscues tells us what their accuracy rate is. And then if they got a 96 to 100% accuracy, then we know that that is a good independent reading level for the child. If they got less than 96% accuracy, then we know that their independent reading level might need to be a book that is a little bit lower level. And then once we find their right range, then when we're working in small groups, we're working on usually one or two levels above their independent reading level. And then when they're private reading, partner reading, doing reader's workshop, they're working on their independent reading level. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I hope that this helps answer some of your questions.